So I'm going to give you the short version of all this. Clementi uh, first wrote these very, very popular, famous, and maybe the greatest sonatines ever written uh, in 1797. Um, it was actually published by a different publisher then, and then later Clementi published it. Uh, he was a great businessman. Uh, he published it six different times, six editions, because he wanted to make money. And uh, really, the first four editions are what we're familiar with, the, 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 version, the original version that we always play, pretty much. In 1815-ish, he put out a new edition, uh, and he put boldly on the cover, with considerable improvements. Dirty little secret, uh, not every single change I would call it an improvement. About 75% I think really are better, maybe 25% are um, as good, but you know, just different. And then some of them, a few, um, I, I prefer the original, so don't throw out your original versions, it's still a good, good version. Um, that version is very hard to find today. There is no uh, uh, commercially available publication of all six sonatinas, the revised version which is sad. Uh, you can find scattered movements here and there. Um, so, what, but what's never been done, uh, the thing that's not very well known is all six of those original editions are riddled with errors. Every single one of them. He was a great composer, but a poor proofreader. Also his typesetter. Oh, oh my god. Uh, nobody has done, until this, uh, laid out all six. It took me two years just to track down all the sources. I needed help from world famous musicologists like Sandra Rosenblum, who practically should get co author credit on this. Uh, she helped me so much. Uh, Yale Library, Eastman, uh, Harvard, uh, British Museum. I'm missing a few. Uh, Eastman, I think I said that. Um, so I tracked them all down. And so I can honestly say, and I'll do brag them, this is the first time ever in 320 years. You know, when this came out, I don't know if you know this, uh, March 20th. Uh, 1797 was when it was first published, and we published it almost to the day, 320 years later. Somebody finally got it right. <laughs> so uh, I think it's really ridiculously long overdue. Uh, so what I'm going to do is give you a little snapshot. First thing I'm going to do, I want to pass this around. Just take a quick glance and try to get this around the room. What I did, and now this is a very popular, basically pretty good edition, but it's only based on one source, er you know, error-ridden source like all the other editions out there today. Um, I penned in with a magic marker all the changes that you, you would see in this edition into this, and sometimes with pencil. It, it'll blow your mind how different this looks. I mean, just rifle through a few pages and you're, you're going to go like this. I think this will really bring it home that this is not just you know another edition with a few alternate fingerings. It's it's quite radically uh, different. So I'm going to pass that around. I should point out that while I'm a big admirer of Willard Palmer. He made an egregious mistake in the tempo of the last, if you turn to page, um, let's see, if you have the Clementi, turn to page 64, 64. Notice the tempo. Who can read out the tempo that's in my edition here? Allegretto Pastoral. Okay, originally uh, Clementi wrote Allegretto Spiritoso. Now I looked up that word Spiritoso. It's not quite as fast as you might think it is. Allegretto, of course, is not Allegro. So, just about every commercial edition today says Allegro Spiritoso. Both of those words, in a sense, are wrong. Allegro is completely, I think Willard Palmer just made a mistake, and then everybody else perpetuated it because they're not bothering to look at primary sources, cautionary tale. Uh, and then Pastoral, I did a, and this is all like a long footnote in here, looked up that word, it's practically a lullaby. It has all kinds of connotations, D major, timpani, those left hand notes, the Ds, those are actually timpani. It's quite fascinating. Uh, so this is not just a teeny little blooper. That's an egregious mistake. We're talking the difference between, you know, this, everybody thinks this is correct because they see a Lego Spiritoso. And that just sounds like some kid wired up on too much coffee, ADD. I mean, it's just, you know, and, and it's probably. So these mistakes are not just trivial things, in my opinion. Uh, so let me go through just some of the highlights of the fun things that have been changed by Clementi, the ones that I think are, in fact, maybe improvements. Um, I'm going to do one fascinating one that only shows up, believe it or not, in the fourth edition, which, by the way, nobody has used as a primary source for the original version. So not even the original version has been put out definitively. That's my next project, by the way. 
so there's a little turn figure that Clementi introduced, which you'll find in this edition, because really this edition is primarily the uh, revised version, but taking into account a lot of the elements of the original as well. Unless you put it all together, it doesn't quite uh, work. So uh, on the re repetition of this, on the recapitulation, he did this. Which is kind of delightful. And it literally shows up in only one of the six original sources. So everything is coded in this, in this edition. Like elements that are circled show up in the original version, but not in the revised. But they usually have applicability anyway. Uh, if a certain kind of parentheses will, will mean, and it's all in the footnotes, you have to read them. Uh, this shows up in the fifth, but not the sixth, and et cetera. And it's all there for the first time. Uh, so that's one delightful little difference. Ah, turn to page 40 on the uh, development. By the way, I also very meticulously the pagination on this. Every single page turn is comfortable. That's a big pet peeve of mine. Love it. Uh, also, if I could, I, I had the elegant symmetry with phrasing. Uh, I mean, I did a lot of work just to get the pagination very, very elegant. Anyway, so the development, he added a pedal mark here. And I think he's so concerned with the uh, pedal point that he doesn't care if some of the harmonies blend. And even though on a, on a modern piano, maybe you might make it a little squeamish, it works perfectly fine on a Clementi piano. How many, how many of you found that just kind of ugly? Oh. Well, good. No hands. <laughs> you know, I was really just counting on their shyness. You know, nobody would raise their hand. Um, so number three, let's go to that one. That would be on page, um, uh, okay, 28, page 28. Uh, now, this blows my mind, because I think if a lot of students did this, a lot of uh, Sonatina festivals that we were talking about, and, and just simply did his pedal mark. Which, well, I'll, I'll just play it. Through the scale run, <gasps> heresy. Uh, and I realize it's probably a little bit more washy on a modern piano, but I think, you know, providing you don't do this. I mean, if you voice it terribly, then I would be the first one to say, don't do it. But I think if you voice it well, So there are pedal marks sprinkled through that don't show up in the original version at all. There's also what I think might be, a little, little research on this, it's, it's pure speculation, but it's plausible. Let's turn to page, um, it would be the recapitulation of number six, that's going to be on, I should know this, uh, uh, 62, page 62, on the recapitulation of number six in D major, he has a long pedal mark that I think is a music box effect. And I looked up when that was invented. And let's just say I was very, very happy that it was invented prior to this time, because then it would have blown, blown my theory out of the water if, if, if you know, that wasn't the case. Uh. You might be wondering, why didn't he write this? that would, would have been, you know, if we go up an octave from what it was originally, uh, okay, but he changed it to, uh, oops, sorry. Instead, my theory is this, the reason he could do a lot of octave above transpositions uh, in 1815 versus 1797, he had a bigger piano. I mean, the piano was expanding, but not quite big enough to get that note. So he had to rewrite that passage. So in my view, and, yeah, I forgot to put this in, in, the, in the notes. You're going to get a little tidbit that's not in there. Can you believe it? Uh, in my view, if you were to change it to this, you have my permission. I think if he had had those notes, he would have done that. He yeah, would have rewritten it again. So it's perfectly OK. But I like this too. I'm saying, how many of you think that, that sounds like a little music box effect? Is that plausible? Is that possible? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Were you offended that, that I actually pedaled through different harmonies? Yeah. 
And, and again, it, a lot has to do with, with uh, the student playing it well. I mean, if you do this. You know, uh, you, you've really got to make your left hand incredibly quiet, I think, to make that happen. Um, so, look at that. See, I knew this was going to just squeeze through. I, I'm trying to give you some of the most titillating, interesting highlight uh, changes that he made. Um, so, how, uh, you know, take a look at um, number two, uh, the first movement, uh, just as a sample of what I want, want to make a, a point. Um, on page 18, uh, Sonatina number two, page 18, first page. Now, you're going to see a whole lot of things encircled. They have, they're in circles, okay? Insofar as you can find the revised version, the considerable improvement version today, I'll give you an example. Henley has uh, a collection of sonatinas. I mentioned this in a footnote. Uh, different composers, different sonatinas. Two out of the six of this are in there, and they purport to be, you know, the revised version. However, they're based on one uh, source only, therefore er er error-ridden. I have a two-page handout of all the mistakes that are in the, just those two in the Henley edition. Not only did they perpetuate every single Clementi mistake, they made a few of their own. And that's Henley. So you can only imagine all the mistakes that are in you know, the, the regular commercial editions that are out there. Um, so what I think I'll do to wrap it up, because I can't, well, not quite, but um, I'm going to play number six. I'm going to recommend, and John will be very happy about this, um, that when you have repeats, if you decide to to eventually, uh, I don't even know if we have enough copies, but of course, this is available, of course, on Abundant Silence's website, uh, the Clementi edition. If you literally, if you just Google "Cool Clementi," uh, it will come up uh, on both Amazon and, and uh, although he prefers Abundant Silence uh, over Amazon. Uh, anyway, uh, so if you do repeats, which I would recommend, here's my suggestion. I still like a lot of the elements of the original edition. Um, Oh yeah, I almost forgot to make this point about number two. Um, so, if all I did was cross-correlate the two revised editions to at least get a, 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 a more correct revised version than other people have done, that's still not enough, because that would have left out everything that you see in circles. So ask yourself, if you have this text right here, but you didn't have everything in, uh, in the circles, would that really give you all the information you need? Because everything in those circles is from the original version. This is actually a composite of all six editions that you're looking at. This, this page really wouldn't, you would not have all the information you need to play this according to what uh, uh, Clementi really wanted. Uh, great businessman, very, very sloppy editor. That's all I can say. <laughs> Big admirer, but wow, did he need a proofreader, something bad. And he hasn't had one until 320 years later. <laughs> <laughs> well, better late than never, huh? So uh, here's what I recommend if you do repeats. Do the original version on the first time, and do the uh, revised version by edition on the repeat. You have your cake and eat it too. You get everything. And then if you have places where you can do uh, lead-in cadenza, you, you all know what a lead-in cadenza is? I, I could just give the floor to John, but then he'll go over my time. So anyway, uh, uh, there, there's a place just before, usually just before the recapitulation, you have a, a suspended dominant seventh. So this is this moment in the Clementi. Uh, in the original version, it goes like this. Uh, but in the revised version, it's... Uh, and back in those days, you didn't just sit on that and go, Okay, I'm done. Then go right into it. You, you, you showed off, like a vocalist, uh, some kind of mini cadenza, a, a limited cadenza, I mean, not four pages going all over the map like a, a concerto, but uh, something like this. You notice I made it kind of organic. You hear little wisps of the motives, uh, and then you go into it here. And so I've actually worked out two cadenzas, two different ones, for the first time on the original version. And the other one you, you heard already. I, I don't even 
know if I have time, if I do. Okay, I'll give it a shot. I have four minutes before Q and see how Taskmaster I am. Uh, Q and A. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get through. Uh, you just cut me off if I don't. Uh, so I'll play the original. Oh, and, and I'm also going to introduce um, uh, some of the, a few little wisps of my own ideas thrown in there, but hopefully in the style of Clementi. So you, you won't even be the wiser unless you really know the piece well. Uh, I'll give you a little heads up though. Let's see what's one of them. So here. I might sneak in uh, something like that, or my favorite, I was rather proud of this. Uh, well, that's from the revised, already slightly different. Uh, Anyway, uh, uh, one of my uh, the changes he made that uh, that I really think is delicious. Uh, uh, let's see. He stayed on this, but in the revised version, I think that B minor is so much better. Oh my God, that really is considerably improved. Uh, I just wanted to point that one out too. So anyway, uh, I don't really know if I have time to do this entire thing. I, I, you know, I'm not going to do that because I, I've talked too much. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, oh god, look at that. Arthur, it's already 918. You should do some of it. Well, I'll, I'll do some. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll do the, uh, the second time, the revise, because you're already more familiar with the, uh, uh, if I can find where that happens. Uh, let's see. Um, you wouldn't believe the layout of this. Uh, the Look at the second time come in. Okay, now I'm embarrassed. Um, I'm just going to pick it up from here. I don't even know what this is. slipped into a lot of his writing. Uh, this edition has more information about performance practice in the edition on the planet. Everything that's out there is in this edition. And he made a point that it's okay to do old school Viennese, you know, detaché for extra spirit, I right, quote. So it's legal. It's all right to occasionally, you know, don't be totally hung up on legato, you know. Uh, so you see what I did there? Thank you. 
have to go back down the octave at the end, even though he went off. <laughs>